My life is in very, very, very grave danger. Amid kidnappings of Americans, the White House has maintained a hard policy of never engaging, negotiating, or paying ransoms. A look at some very rare exceptions in U.S. hostage policy, now on the New York Times Minute. We'll do everything that we need to do that the American people would expect from their leaders to continue to uh, do everything we can to get our, our hostages back. In the past five years, European countries have paid Al-Qaeda at least $125 million in ransom, while the United States has refused. Rukmini Kalamaki covers the issue for The Times. So what this means is that if an American is taken, especially if they're held alongside other Europeans, they are the most likely to be killed or to be held indefinitely. But there are loopholes. The U.S. will sometimes have a third party negotiate, as when the Qatari government helped secure Peter Theo Curtis's release without a ransom. Uh -oh. <laughs> the U.S. also directly engaged in a prisoner exchange when Bo Bergdahl was swapped for five Taliban members. The loophole here is that U.S. officials do not consider the main arm of the Taliban to be a terrorist organization. Of course, for families, this is all semantics. Um, the Taliban, ISIS, Al-Qaeda, it's all the same to them, and they want to know why is it that their own relatives uh, are not being let go. Finally, there are, very rarely, rescue attempts. Earlier this summer, commandos tried to rescue James Foley, but... They apparently um, either had bad intelligence or got there too late because the, the safe house where they, where they went was empty. In the end, the biggest determinant could be which group is holding the hostage. Al-Qaeda has made kidnapping a business, so there are protocols. I've had negotiators tell me that if an American is taken by a terrorist group, you better pray that it's Al-Qaeda. It's far worse to be a captive of ISIS. You most likely will be tortured, and they seem to have obviously no, no qualms about executing Americans. Time journalist Stephen Sotloff, currently the highest profile U.S. hostage, is a captive of ISIS. <laughs>